Also got electrocuted on the power pole one day, and I called the power guys, and they came over, and I said, I think our power's going to go out because we just fried the one up here. I said, but it's probably good enough to eat by now, and they said, only if you're Puerto Rican. <laughs> the, the Crucians did not want to have a thing to do with eating iguanas, by the way. But in Puerto Rico, it's a delicacy. We eat different things. Yeah, I had it. But anyway, the story here was that, of course, Maria came through and took out the canby. This was a very dense forest. And so the sun came in, she flooded the gut, and then water lilies came up on their own. Now, I knew they were in here, but only in very wet periods of time do you get a water lily or two coming up. Uh, and then after that, underwater plants came up that are native here. Uh, we then, of course, had loads of frogs, but then pretty soon fish started to show up, crayfish showed up, freshwater shrimp showed up, and they all happened without us lifting a finger. So is there any way you can keep? I wish we could. But it's going to eventually go down? It's going to dry up, exactly. Right now, the water has stopped flowing over the dam. Uh, well, there's a tiny trickle. As long as there's a tiny trickle, then we're keeping, we're even, keeping up with it. But as soon as there's not a trickle, this is going to start to climb. Because it warmed for years. There's a water level that. that's up the uh, But nothing's been seen like this for 30, 40 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So you were at a very opportune time. So Mar Maria gave us a wonderful gift, and it's really divine. I mean, and we're so enjoying it. And this particular water lily turns out to be an old-fashioned hybrid tropical water lily from the 1800s. This is one called Dauber, which is an absolutely lovely thing. It, 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 it's interesting. It's a great one for your summer water garden. It's a Dauben. Because this is a Dauben water lily. The the if it's in a tub, it will be a dwarf. If it's in a pond, it will be full size. <laughs> yeah. And it belongs even here. Because they have the pride of the trees. It's, it's their tree. Uh, and it's a very showy thing. We're looking at the maga tree above you, which is the hibiscus tree from Puerto Rico. It's native only there. And uh, But one problem. We really wanted to, to have a lot of these to give out to, to people. To put a giant saman tree that had covered this whole area. It was a big, shady tree. This was even partially under it. Well, Maria came along, pushed the saman tree out of the way. Now, my question was, when the saman tree took away the shade, I thought, oh, my God. That stuff's going to burn up, and it's like, nope, just grew thicker. <laughs> just so grew thicker? Just grew thicker, because it eats leaves for lunch. Just wandering. I mean, something that falls on it today is grows over and oh. So you really don't have to clean it up. <laughs> Underneath, see all those ha hammocks under there? There's probably logs and fallen stuff off the trees in it. You'll never know. Wandering Jew. So baby papayas coming along. Yeah. And then I'll show you the wedding garden. And I, this is a cool new thing that's going to happen here. Again, you have to look for the lemonade after the lemons, right? So when, which is good because I That's the MAGA tree. <laughs> Puerto so Rican. That, I didn't have to worry about saying to the boys, oh, I want to try and the wedding. Not a So, I'm happy. Uh, this is a member of the coffee family from time. Belize, and it grows mm. along streams with big white tube flowers that are fragrant at night. Over here is another one of the flowering bananas, the pendant lobster claw. Oh. And isn't it magnificent? Yeah. Now there's the true flower right there and right here. So the hummingbird would come in and put its bill in right there. But as soon as you see oranges and reds and yellows together, those are yeah. hummingbird flowering coming in for sure. Yeah. Then we come around the back side, and this is where another heliconia is, which is Lady Di. So this is Lady Di here. It has kind of creamy yellow flowers. And very pretty. But we didn't know when we put the corn near China. Now that stem will get more roots and it'll grow faster. All of that was true. The other part that I didn't realize though was it was going to sprout along the stem too. And as it did so, it's been crowding out my lady dye. <laughs> However, lady dye will start running this way. So if the lady dye will cover in here, this one will move this way. These things move like bamboo. And so they'll stick names that nobody alive today would really relate to. Seal As the fruit dries, it's a, a big rib tray. fruit. It puts also it under pressure and it on. finally explodes and throws the seeds. And you'll hear quite a loud pop when it does. But if you harvest the, the fruit before it's ready to go, you can hollow out the middle, put sand in there, and if you're writing with your quill, when you <coughs> dip in ink, you now need to dip it in sand to get the excess ink off before you can write. Sandbox. Sandbox. But again, nobody alive today would know why you would call it a sandbox. That's the helicopter. Now that's not true on all the islands. Right. Did you ever hear this called the Balize? I have not. No. That's a beautiful name. I like it better than it's the one I called it. In Central this and South America, it would be about over 200 feet over the top of the rainforest. 
So they can be absolutely gigantic trees. They are bat pollinated, and quite a few bat pollinated trees have taken on a kind of a sacred image. For Native American peoples, this tree was sacred because it was viewed as the intermediary between the living world and the spirit world because the bats flying around it at night doing the pollinating. Mm -hmm. And baobab trees from Africa, people in Africa had the same opinion. The bats would pollinate them at night and they saw that as a sacred intermediary tree between their spirit world and the, and the real world they live in. What did it grow? What's that? The group. This is and a cape. And something happened and took them on the fall out. They're slowly recovering up there. Those are Schomburgia orchids in June, big purple flower. But one interesting thing about this one, Heliconia caribe. Generally, they're not in full bloom until about June, but they're starting a little bit. This is Heliconia caribe. This is the blacksmith shop, and these are the hog bums he was talking about. You can find a whole one just right yeah. off of the top. They're good to eat. They're safe, people. So, not bad. Anyway, 